everyone. Here is the latest ASEAN news with me, Vanessa. President of Indonesia will visit Ukraine and Russia on peace building mission. Indonesian President Joko Widodo says he will urge his Russian and Ukrainian counterparts to open room for dialogue during a peace-building mission to the countries because war has to stop and the global food chains needs to be reactivated. Speaking before leaving to attend the G7 summit in Germany, where Widodo was invited to as the G20 rotating president, he says he will also urge Russia's Vladimir Putin to order an immediate ceasefire. Widodo adds he will travel to both Ukraine and Russia without providing specific details of his trip. Saya akan mengunjungi Ukraina. I'll visit Ukraine and will meet with President Zelensky. The mission is to invite the Ukrainian president, President Zelensky, to open room for dialogue for peace, to build peace, because war has to stop and the global food chain needs to be reactivated. From Ukraine, I'll go to Russia to meet with President Vladimir Putin with the same mission in mind. I'll invite President Putin to open room for dialogue, immediate ceasefire and stop the war. Dialog dan sesegera mungkin untuk melakukan gencatan senjata dan menghentikan perang. The conflict has caused major disruption to supply chains, stoking a food and energy crisis that has seen inflation soar in many countries, some of which have imposed export carbs to preserve domestic supplies. Myanmar junta moved Suchi trial to prison venue. A source familiar with her case says Myanmar's military rulers have, without explanation, ordered all legal proceedings against the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi to be moved from a court room to a prison. In Myanmar. Yet it is of the utmost importance. Nobel laureate Suu Kyi, who turned 77, has been charged with at least 20 criminal offences since she was toppled in a coup early last year, including multiple counts of corruption. Junta leader Ming Holain has so far allowed Suu Kyi to remain in detention at an undisclosed location in the capital Napitiao. Despite convictions for incitement and several minor offenses, Suu Kyi denies all charges. The Nobel laureate was arrested during the military's coup early last year and has been found guilty of several comparatively minor offenses so far, among a multitude of charges that carry combined prison sentences of almost 190 years. Myanmar has been in turmoil since the February 1st coup last year against Suu Kyi's democratically elected government led to widespread protest and raised international concern about the end of tentative political reforms following decades of military rule. Germany and Indonesia meet on the sidelines of the G7, both discuss bilateral ties. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Indonesian President Joko Widodo meet on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Bavaria, where they briefly posed for cameras in front of the Alps' picturesque panorama. <laughs> Scholz told Widodo as they sat down to talk that looking at the mountains is a good way to discuss an essential in bilateral ties. Indonesia is a so-called outreach country Germany invited to the G7 summit along with Argentina, India, Senegal, South Africa and several international organizations discusses about Russia and Ukraine conflicts. Yeah. Australia Foreign Minister meets Vietnamese counterpart in Hanoi for bilateral cooperation. Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong met her Vietnamese counterpart Bui Tan Son in Hanoi for talks. The two shook hands before sitting down to a bilateral meeting where they discussed boosting cooperation in the sectors of trade and climate change. Wong is expected to meet Vietnamese President Nguyen Trompuk later. She is expected to depart Hanoi for Malaysia. At least two people died in electrical fire in Bangkok. Local media reports a huge fire torched buildings and cars parked near Bangkok's Chinatown, killing at least two people. An eyewitness, Oaki Ekarat Soin, recorded the blaze as several flashes were seen and explosions can be heard. Thailand authorities tell media that an electric transformer was the cause of the fire. A full investigation has yet to be conducted. 
Authorities say the two deceased were trapped inside the buildings during the fire. Ferdinand Marco Jr. sworn in on June 30 as the new president of the Philippines. Ferdinand Marcos Jr. won Philippines' 2022 election in May and is said to be sworn into office yesterday, replacing President Rodrigo Duterte for a six-year term. The British-educated younger Marcos began his over-three-decade political career while his father was still in office and was elected vice-governor of their home province of Ilocos Norte in 1981 and governor in 1983. He ran for vice president in 2016 but lost by a small margin in a contest he claimed to was rigged. He filed a case in the Supreme Court to overturn the results but the judges ruled against him. In the Philippines, the president and vice president are elected separately. Marcos won 31.6 million or 58.77% of ballot cast with an 82% turnout. South Korea provides 1 million in humanitarian aid to earthquake hit Afghanistan. The government says South Korea plans to provide 1 million in humanitarian assistance to victims of an earthquake in Afghanistan that killed 1,000 people. The 6.1 magnitude quake has left more than 1,500 injured and authorities are bracing for casualty numbers to grow as information trickles in from remote mountain villages. The U.S. Geological Survey says the quake was the deadliest in Afghanistan since 2002. It struck about 44 kilometers from the southeastern city of Khost, near the border with Pakistan. That's the wrap up for today, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a lovely weekend.